What do you know? You came back. Welcome back to Intermediate Algebra. I'm Bill Witte, your host, and today we got a bucket load to cover. I'm going to talk very quickly, as usual. And if I talk too fast, remember, you can always go to the web page at www.montgomerycollege.edu up slash algebra two, the number two. Okay? Well, let's see. One other thing before we begin. You will definitely need today My secret weapon. your TI-83. So you know what? I say this calls for action, and now... Go get it. Turn the tape off if you need to, or pull it out of your pocket, but you're going to need it. So get ready uh, and come back, okay? We have a big show for you tonight. Well, let's see what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover graphing various polynomial functions, all kinds, maybe lines or quadratics, so all kinds of curvy stuff, or even cubics. Pretty cool, okay? But before we do that, since I talk so fast, maybe we should do a little bit of a review. We don't do much review around here, but we're going to do a little bit of a review of what we did last week, okay? Do you mind telling me what this is all about, Mr. Well, you remember that numbers, like people, can travel in pairs, and it makes life way more interesting if they do. Now, when we have a group of pairs, we don't call it a party, we call it a relation. Here's some examples. These are all relations. Now, in relation A, we have a bunch of pairs. 4 is paired with 6, 0 is paired with 7, 6 is paired with 2, and 2 is paired with 6, etc. Okay? In relation B, I, I have three pairs. It's the set of the pairs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, etc. Wait a minute. I want you to remember that order counts. These are ordered pairs. So the pair 6, 2 is different from the pair 2, 6. And we had some other vocabulary. Now look at, I say look at here. The set of all the first numbers of your pairs, you might want to call, you computer weenies might want to call it the inputs if this was a computer. That set of all the first numbers is called the domain. For instance, in the first relation there, the domain is the 4, the 0, the 6, and the 2, or the red numbers, if you would. Or the x's. Get the idea? Hmm. Now, when we start to uh, graph points, it is going to be all the x's. <laughs> Another name we have for it, since when we start to graph things, you're going to get to pick what these are. We're going to call this domain, this set of first numbers, the independent variables, because you got to independently pick it. I know you are, but what am I? Well, if the first number is the domain, the second number, or if you were a computer weenie, output is called the range. In our first relation, the range would be 6, 7, 2, and 6. Okay? Aha! Note that if this was a graph, it would be all the possible y values. And we're not going to get to pick that, so you're going to get to pick the x's. The formula will decide what uh, the y is, so we're going to call that the dependent variable, because it depends on what you picked. And now for something completely different. Well, there was a special type of relation, very useful relation. Well, isn't that special? Called a function. Now, what made a relation special enough to be a function? Wait a minute. Well, you know what the definition was? For every element in the domain, there was a unique element in the range. In other words, only one in the range. Now, a lot of people didn't like that definition, so we gave you another one. Every x is paired with only, only one y. Or how about this one? His brain is gone. All the x's are different. That's easy enough, isn't it? As long as all the x's are different, you've got yourself a function. Prepare to be astonished. And you may remember that we can test whether a relation is a function graphically. Uh, excuse me, Professor Brainiac. Well, the way we do it, we have to make sure that every x only gets one y visually. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Basically, that means we're going to run the vertical line test and see if a vertical line moving from left to right ever crosses our graph here more than once. Because if it does, we don't have a function. Hmm. Let's try it. 
I think we've got it. Cool. It is a function because it never crossed it in more than one spot. So this gets the function seal of approval in this case. They don't always, but in this case it did. Now, how about this one? Is this relation a function? Run the vertical line test. Uh-oh. Now, it only takes one to mess it up. Okay, now this has way more than one place where an x is paired with with more than one y, but this certainly is not a function. While it is a relation, it's not a function. Nothing for you. Get the idea? And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Now there's a special type of function, really, really useful, called a one-to-one -one function. Okay, now what makes something Excuse me? a one-to-one -one function? Well, the definition, every element in the domain is paired with only one element in the range. Wait a minute. That was, all, that, was the, that was the definition for a function. Well, it has to be a function. But in addition to that, well, doggy. every element of the range, it works backwards, it has a unique element of the domain. Well, that's a lot of words. How about every x is paired with only one y and well, doggy. every y is paired with only one x. You like that? Well, most people don't like that either. How about... I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. How about... All the x's are different, that makes it a function, and all the y's are different. That would make it a one-to-one -one function. And it only takes one to mess it up now, okay? Note that here's another one that we can test graphically. We'll use the vertical line test to test whether it's a function in the first place. And in addition to that, Hi, caramba. we'll use the horizontal, this is a new line test, to see if it is a special type of a function called a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so the vertical line test looks good. It didn't hit any place in, in, in two places. Now how about the horizontal line test? Let's work from bottom to top. I don't see it. Looks good. This is it, baby. This is a one-to-one -one function. Got the idea? How about this one? First of all, is it a function? Well, to see if it's a function, we'll do the vertical line test. Well, your story is very compelling. Okay, that looks like it is, because it never hit it in two places. Now, is it that special type of function called a one-to-one -one function? Wait a minute. That'll take the horizontal line test. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's right. Doesn't look good. And it only takes one place to mess it up, but this really got messed up, as you can see. So while it is a function, it's not a one-to-one -one function. Oh, very bad. Definitely unacceptable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You knew all that already, didn't you? So it's time for some exciting new stuff. Remember what I said we were going to cover? Graphs of polynomial functions. So, it's always been to start at the beginning. let's graph linear or x to the one-th functions. Pay attention, boys. I'll show you how it's done. Okay. How to graph linear equations. They have an x and a y. What I want you to do is start by solving for y, okay? We're always going to begin these by solving for y. Well, let's see, who's keeping y from being alone? The 4x. So I'll subtract 4x, and I'll get 2y equals 8 minus 4x. Now, I've got to get rid of that 2. He's multiplying, so I'll do the opposite. I'll divide. Got to do, divide everybody. 8 divided by 2 and minus 4x divided by 2. And nicely, I'm going to get 4 minus 2x. Now, I'm ready to put in some points. I got a little recipe for y, you see. And what are we going to put in for x? Let's put in the easiest number you know. Let's put in 0. So instead of x, I'm going to have a 0. And the recipe will tell me y is 4 minus 2 times 0, or 4 minus 0, or 4. So there's a point that we know fits onto this line, the point 0, 4. Let's graph it. Go over none and up 4. Okay? Now, 
We put in 0, let's put in another point. Let's put in 1. If I put in 1 instead of x, it'll be 4 minus 2 times 1. The recipe will tell me what y is equal to in this case. 4 minus 2, or 2. So I have another point. 1, 2. Let's go over 1 and up 2. Now I'm guessing you already know where the line is, but I asked people to do. His brain is gone. I asked you to do three points. Now don't put in negative 87. You could put in negative 87 because the line goes on forever, but why not make life easier for yourself? Put in easy numbers. That's why I use 0, 1, and 2. Not that you have to use 0, 1, and 2, but I always do to make it easy. If we put in a 2, we'll have 4 minus 2 times 2, known downtown as 4 minus 4, or 0. Now I'm hoping these line up. 2, 0. Go over 2 and up 0. Well, what do you know? You look marvelous. That's the check. That's why I do 3, because if the 3 line up, to infinity and beyond. I draw the line and we are goony goo goo. Okay, if you do three and they don't line up, well then you know you screwed up. You have a check. Get the idea? Remember what we were talking about when we talked about lines and graphing them when we talked about slope. The slope of a line, which should be the same between any two points on the line. The slope was defined as how much we went up which we called the rise, over in a fraction how much we went over. In this case, I went up 3 and over 1, so the slope, we're not going to say 3 over 1. You never say to your friend, you owe me 3 over $1. You say, you owe me $3. Do that so again. Okay. Let's pick any two points. Make it easy for yourself on this one. I like to pick the points at corners so there's no fractions. Now, in this line, I, between these two points, I went up one, that was my rise, and over two. So it shouldn't surprise you that the slope is one half. Now one half is a lower number than three. There again, it shouldn't surprise you. This red line is less steep, so it should have a lower number than the green line. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Uh-oh. Now how about going downhill? Let's pick some points here. In this case, I'm going to go down 2 and over 3. So the slope, we're walking from left to right on this line, by the way, is minus 2 thirds. It's, I hope it didn't surprise you that it was a negative slope, because you are going downhill. Now, does it matter which point? Better not matter which points I pick. What if I pick? Play it for her, play it for me. Play it. OK, well, let me use these two points then. Between those two points, let's see, I'll go down 4 and over 6. Well, that seems quite different. Is that your final answer? Oh, I forgot. I have to reduce. Minus 4 6, if I reduce it, is minus 2 thirds. Hi, caramba! And they're the same. So it doesn't matter which two points you pick. The slope, by definition, is any two points, the rise over the run. Then. So you might get a problem like this. Draw a graph of a line containing the point 0, 2 with a slope of minus 1 over 2, or minus 1 half. Well, let's see. I have one point, the point 0, 2. Go over none and up 2. Now, here's the confusing thing. When I graphed that point, I started at the origin, and I did the x, then the y. Everybody confuses this with the slope where you don't start at the origin. I'm going to start at that point, a point on the line, and I'm not going to do the x then the y. I'm going to do the rise, kind of the y, isn't it? And then the run. So they're kind of backwards of each other, graphing a point and doing the slope. Well, let's go to that point and do a rise, really a fall, of minus 1, and then a run of 2, and I find another point that by definition must be on our line that we're looking for. Now once I have two points, Aha! I know where that line is. So I've graphed a line given this information. 
I'm dangerous. I'm very, very Okay. Do that again. Well, let's try it one more time, just in case you missed it. I went too fast. Okay, this time we want to uh, draw a line containing 1, 1 with a slope of 3. Now, that's a little bit tough. Well, first of all, we can do 1, 1. Go over 1 and up 1. Now, the slope of 3. Now, you're used to fractions. Don't be flustered by this. 3 is a fraction. 3 is the fraction 3 over 1, remember? So, we would go up 3. That would be our rise. I know you are, but what am I? Now, that's right, 3 over 1, and I, then I, from there, my run would be 1. Remember, you can throw 1 around like cheap meat. And there's my other point. Get the idea? Once you have two points, you've got yourself a line. Brilliance! That's all I can say. Sheer, unadulterated brilliance! It's a much easier way to graph lines than getting all those points, isn't it? If you have that information, the slope. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Well... Could you, if I just gave you this line, could you give me the slope? Well, pick two points, any two points. Pick easy points. Let's take a look. I'm going to pick this one because it's right at the corner, and this one because it's also right at a corner, because I hate fractions. And I'm going to measure the slope. In other words, measure how much I went up or down relative to how much I went over. You're not allowed to go diagonal, you see. Well, we went down one and over three. You are correct, sir. The slope is, in fact, minus one-third. You can see why. Thank you, sir. Have okay, better do another one. We're a little bit confused. We gotta pick any two points, but so let's make it easy. Pick two points that are at, if you would, corners. Well, that's one-one, that's an easy one. Okay, and that one. Now we're gonna measure our rise and our run. One up two. Over one. Bam! <laughs> slope is two over one or two. Not so bad, is it? Didn't surprise you that it was a positive slope because we were going uphill. There's something I have to ask you. What if we use different uh, points on this same line? We'd better get that same answer of it too, shouldn't we? I'm going to use some different points. This one, and what's another one that's on a corner? Oh, that's way up there. How much did I go up relative to how much I went over? Now, what is 4 over 2? No problemo. Comes out to the same answer. You love that. Okay? So that's about... Now I use my secret weapon! Now we can do it with a calculator. Well, before we do it with a calculator, let me give you a little bit of a memory tour of some of the buttons that we're going to use on the TI-83. Well, let's see. We're going to use the y equals button. That's why I told you to solve for y. That's not the seven y equals, that's the y equals. That's the x button. Now, you're going to see other letters on there, because x can really be any letter. It can be any language. You'll see some Greek letters on there. But that's when I say x, that's the x button. There's the graph button. He's actually going to do it for you once you've set everything up. There's the clear button. He's going to get you out of trouble and get rid of old material and old graphs. Now, this is the negative button as opposed to the subtraction button. You'll need to know the difference whether you're doing a negative or a subtraction. That's a little bit tricky. And there's your old buddy, the on button, okay? You have to be, <laughs> know where that is to even begin. Now, you may need the alt button to turn this bad boy off, because that's how you turn it off. I had somebody tell me that they just left it under their bed. That's how it turned off. But if you hit alt, and then the on button, you can see that off is in orange. Anything that's in orange, you get with the alt button. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Now, we want to graph this line. It has a y and an x, so it is a line. But what have I told you? Excuse me! That's why we have the y equals button. That's why I tell you to solve for y, bub. That's one of the many reasons why we'll begin every problem solving for y. So let's do just that. What do we have to do to solve for y down in the corner here? I'll subtract 2x from both sides. Then 
I'm going to divide everything by 5 to get that y by itself. And son of a gun, I'll have gotten y by itself. Quit crying. You'll have a fraction, but the calculator is going to do your work for you. So the calculator will give me, or, or solving, I get 3 minus 2x over 5. Now that could... No, you are, but what am I? That could also be written y equals minus 2x over 5 plus 3. Okay, so let's... Either way, however you want to write it. Now if we're going to use the calculator, we're going to turn it on. It may already be on. We're going to hit the y equals button. And we're going to clear. We might have to clear because you might have already done some work. You might not have to. That's why I put it in parentheses. Then you're going to type what y is equal to minus 2x over 5. That's divided by 5 plus 3. Now you're going to hit the negative button there because that's a negative. Woohoo! Come to. Then when you hit graph, it is going to come to Papa. And you're going to see it. And if you want to get out, you'll hit clear. Well, let's try it. What do you say? I'm going to hit on. And I'm going to hit y equals. And I didn't have to clear in this case because there wasn't anything there. So I'll type negative 2x over 5. Negative 2x divided by 5 plus 3. And let me get all psyched up. I'm going to hit the graph button. And that's what it should look like. Pretty cool. Now how do I get out of this? I hit clear. And I'm back in the ball game, ready to do another. OK, so that's the idea. Well, and now for something completely different. That's how to graph lines. How about graphing quadratics or x squared type equations? Well, they're going to be a little bit different. But we're going to do them in somewhat the same manner. Here's a pretty regular x squared <laughs> equation. Don't be afraid. What are we going to have to do? With all due respect, sir, I believe this is going to be our finest hour. We can do it. Let's put in some points. Put in your old buddy zero. You'd marry zero, wouldn't you? For x, and we get y equals zero squared or zero. So there's one point, the point zero, zero. Okay. Put in another one. May make life easy. Let's put in one. It seems the same. One squared is one. Let's do the point one, one. Now certainly we haven't made any mistakes. Let's do one more. What would you normally do? I'm going to be a troublemaker here. I'm going to put in minus 1, because I think you can do it easily and know that you didn't make a mistake. Minus 1 squared, a minus 1 times a minus 1 is a plus 1, isn't it? So if we graph the point minus 1, 1, you can see, uh-oh, it didn't line up. But I didn't make a mistake. So what's going on here? This is an x squared. It's not a line. It's going to end up being a curve. <coughs> Wait a just minute. Well, let's try putting in some other points. If we put in 2, y equals 2 squared, so y is 4. Let's graph the point 2, 4. Okay, what would be another one? Well, logically, I guess I'd go backward. Put in a minus 2, also because it's easy. Minus 2 squared is still 4. And look what you got here. You know what you have when you do an x squared? Cool! A curve. How cool is that? Do that again. Okay, let's do another one because I'm a little nervous about this x squared stuff and it's going to get more difficult than this. Holy alphabet. Look at that one. I have more than 1x. I have x squared plus 2x minus 1. Well, the point here is every place I see an x, I put in whatever number to replace it with. Like, for instance, 0. Bring it all. I put a 0 everywhere. So it's not that hard. 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 1, just put in zeros. In that case, y is minus 1. Okay. The point 0 minus 1. Let's put in another easy point. How about 1? Now you put it everywhere you see x. 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 1. Let's see, 1 plus 2 minus 1, y is 2. So I've got the point over 1 and up 2. 
starting to see where the curve may be. What if I put in a minus 1? Be careful with that minus. Minus 1 squared and 2 times minus 1. Remember, when you square something, you get a positive. OK, so if we add all these up, I'm going to get a minus 2. Back 1 and down 2. Oh, it's going a little lower. Hmm. Well, here's the reason I bring this one up is I want you to be strategic in your choice of points. What would be another good point, perhaps, to pick here? I'm going to go back to the left and uh -oh. I'm going to use minus 2. It's a little bit more difficult, but I think it's going to work out. It's a little more strategic because I can, I'm hoping that that curve will come back up. Well, minus 2 squared and I put a, a minus 2 in for x on the other one and I get y is minus 1. So I've got the point minus 2 minus 1. Ah. You let to me one more and I can say, I'll give you one more point. Let's put in strategically, I can see it coming up. Minus 3. Minus 3 squared plus 2 times minus 3. We're going to get a 2. Go back 3 and up 2. And you'll be able to see, son of a gun, you do have your curve. It's just in a different place. And you can see where it is, I hope. It is a lie. Get the idea? So it's pretty similar, except we have to pick the right points. I want to show you. Take a look at this one. It doesn't look that Ooh, hard. I'm dying. Oh, what don't you like about this? The negative? Well, let's put in a zero. Minus two, zero squared. Oh, I love zero. <laughs> easy. Anything times zero is zero. So we got the point zero, zero. Okay, I'm rolling. Let's put in another easy number. Let's put in one. Minus two times one squared. Now remember your order of operations. Do your uh, oh, exponent first, one squared, and then times minus two, and we get minus two. So the point over one and down two. Hmm. I'm going to fool you a little bit here. Now I'm going to put in, hmm, I want you to put in minus 1. Now if you do minus 1 squared, you get positive 1. And then after the exponentiation, multiply by minus 2. Again, you get minus 2. So you've got the point minus 1, minus 2. And guess what? Oh, it didn't work. Yes, it did. Look at this. It is a curve. Surprise, surprise, surprise. It's just upside down. So, when the, you know what? You're going to find whenever a, the x squared term is negative, it's going to be upside down. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Well, whenever we have an x squared to graph, I know you are, but what am I? We're going to call it a quadratic. Fancy schmancy, okay? And it's going to be a curve. It's either going to look like this. Or it's going to look like that. Now, if it's a positive x squared, it's going to hold water, if you would. And it's like this one. If it's a negative x squared, it's not going to hold water. So predict that. Hmm. Will it ever look like this? Nothing for you. That's not even a function. That's not going to look like it. Hmm. And it won't look like this either. You're way off. I say you're way off this time. So it's either going to be a u or an upside down u. Every time it's x squared, be looking for that. I don't understand. Well, we're going to have a little problem. I've been spoiling you up to this point. How have you known what points to put in? Something's happened to my, my brain. It's all dried up. Well, I've been spoiling you. I've been giving you the points. You're not going to get that on a test or on the homework. You're going to have to know what points to put in. Houston, we have a problem. Now, I want you to consider, if you used these points and you went through all that work, where would the curve be? Could be there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Could be there, too. Could even be there. Hi, caramba! Could even be there. So you're going to have to be able to pick points strategically. Well, you know what? Perhaps I could be of some assistance. The vertex can certainly be of some assistance. What is the vertex? It's the tip, if you would, the highest or lowest point. There's a vertex. There's a vertex. Get the idea that, oh, well, how about this? We'll call it the middle point. If you knew where the middle point was, it would be a major advantage. Allow me to demonstrate. Well, guess what? If I give you this equation, x squared plus 2x minus 1, 
we're going to call that of the form a, the number in front of x squared, b, the number in front of x, and c, the constant sitting by itself. So you know where a, b, and c are. The vertex will always be at the spot where x equals... Because I said so! No, because it just automatically happens. It'll always be where x is minus b over 2a. Now you'll have to know what b and a are. In this case, it'll always be at Aha! minus 2, because b is 2, over 2 times 1, because a is 1. So let's calculate that out. And the vertex is going to be at minus 2 over 2. Oh boy, is this it's going to be at minus 1. Now that's just the x part. You'll have to put minus 1 in to figure out what the y part of that point is. But son of a gun, it is at minus 1. We put a minus 1 in and we get y is minus 2. So the point minus 1, minus 2, son of a gun, it is where the vertex is. That's a huge advantage to know. You're going to have to know minus b over 2a. Hey man, check it out. Huh? So let's do this one. I'm not going to tell you what points to put in. You're going to figure it out. The vertex, of course, A is 3, B is minus 6, and C is 1. Because I said so. No, because the vertex is at minus B over 2A. So the vertex is at where X equals, Aha! let's see, minus of minus 6 minus of B, and B is minus 6, over 2 times 3. Could it be? It's going to be at Two. 1. It's going to be at positive 1. So we'll have to put a 1 in. Now what am I going to do? Relax, Francis. Put a 1 in for x. You have chosen wisely. That's right. And what do we get for y? y is minus 2. So the point 1 minus 2 not only is on the graph, but this is a huge advantage. It is the vertex. Now, we also know that it goes up, so you can already pretty much sketch it. But I tell people, Come to Papa. You know he's the vertex. Let's do insufficient data. Yeah, we need a little bit more information. Let's do one point to the right of that. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. To help us draw it. Put in a 2. And if I put in a 2 for x, we'll get a 1. So let's graph 2, 1. I do one point to the right, and then... Is that your final answer? I'm going to do one point to the left of the vertex. Of course, that's zero. I love zero. He's easy to put in. So the point zero, 1, because y is 1 in that case. I go over none and up 1, and I know... I know where the graph is. Goal! Not too shabby. I only had to do three points because I knew where the vertex was. Now I use my secret weapon. Okay, what about doing this with a calculator? Let's take a look. I'm going to graph, of course I already have it solved for y. I'm going to graph y squared plus 3x minus 2 and check my answer with a calculator. Remember where y equals is the x button the graph button, the clear button, because I had already done a problem, Yoink. and don't forget the on button. Okay, so I'm going to hit the on button, see if you can keep up with me here. I'm going to hit y equals. I'm going to clear out the old, the old problem that I had done, if there is one. And I'm going to put x squared, that's x to the tooth, plus 3x. Now that's going to be a subtraction of 2 not the minus. It'll get mad at you if you do that. And you hit graph and you're dying. You love this. And you hit clear. Let's try it. I'm going to turn this baby on. I'm going to hit y equals. I'm going to clear out the old one. I'm going to hit x to the tooth plus 3x minus 2. Now that's a subtraction. Then I'm going to hit graph. Look at that. Is that cool as a mule? Now how do I get out of here? I hit clear and I'm hunky dunky. Just that easy. And I can check my answer. It's almost like cheating. Get the idea? Okay.
Okay, I know you're a little nervous about this, so we're going to do one with a negative. I'm going to do uh, y equals negative 2x squared plus 3. Remember what we're going to do. By the way, uh, we're going to use that clear button, okay? And note the difference between minus and subtraction. This one's going to be, this, of course, I've pointed to the subtraction, and that's the minus. This one's going to use a minus. I'm going to hit on. I'm going to hit y equals, clear out the old one, and type in the equation, minus 2x squared plus 3. Hit graph, and you're you'll fall down. And then clear gets you out. I'm going to do it for you. Let's try it. I already got on, so y equals, clear out the old one, negative 2, I don't have to hit times, I can, but it doesn't matter, x to the tooth minus 2x squared plus 3, and hit graph. Shouldn't surprise you. This one's an upside down one, isn't it? Because it was a negative x squared term. And let's clear to get ourselves out of there. Okay. Pretty easy, huh? Nerd alert! Okay, now we're going to do cubics. That's x to the third. It's not that hard, though. Well, let's start with considering what a cubic's going to look like. The most significant part of these quadratics was the x squared, and that really decided which way it went. When it was positive x squared, or when it was negative x squared, really decided the picture. Because, let's see, if I had a positive x squared, it would, it would get higher if it was negative, and it would also stay positive, because a positive times a positive would go up that way, wouldn't it? But if it was a negative x squared, it was negative, the x squared would make it stay Negative, because an even number of negatives makes a positive, but at the end, then you multiply by the minus. Okay, so when it's a negative x squared, it went down. So that was an easy way to tell what the picture would look like. Nerd alert! But with an x to the third, we're always going to have an odd number of negatives. So I hope you consider that it's always going to change sign. An odd number of negatives always makes it change sign. It may go this way and then change the sign if it's a positive x to the third. Or it may go this way and change the sign if it's a negative x to the third. So expect a change of sign and a change of direction for our cubics, or our x to the third problems. Let's play. Here we go. Now we want to sketch the graph of this. Now basically we're going to do points, but I'm going to give you some some steps for this. We'll do some, what we hope will be some easier points. We're going to start with what will be the x-axis intercepts. In other words, where is this going to hit the x-axis? Well, you need to consider that when it hits the x-axis, what is the value of y when it hits the x-axis? When it hits right here, what is the value of y? Well, it's zero, okay? f of x really means y. So we'll put him in. And to find the x-axis intercepts, I'm going to put a 0 in for y. Okay, you love 0. Okay? Now I've got to solve this. Well, one way to solve it, we're not going to give you too hard of problems, is to factor it. I'm going to take an x out of these two, x squared out. Okay, and let me take a look at these two. What comes out of those two is a minus 4. Take a minus 4 out of that. This is what you covered in beginning algebra now. Now I see an x plus 1 in both of these. I'm going to factor him out. And I'll have x plus 1 times x squared minus 4. Now x squared minus 4, you may remember, is the difference of two squares. So I can factor him into x plus 2, x minus 2. So I've got three things here. I get x plus 1, x plus 2, and x minus 2, which means there are three solutions. Doesn't surprise me for a cubic. Hmm. What would make this factor be 0? A minus 1. So there's one place where it hits the uh, x-axis at minus 1. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Another uh, factor that would make it 0 would be minus 2. If I put that in, that would be 0. So that's another solution, and that, since it's a solution, it's where it hits the x-axis. 
Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Got one more. What can I put in to make this bad be, boy be uh, zero would be positive two. So another place where it hits the x-axis, <laughs> boom, is two. So we know we have these points, and we know it changes direction because it's a cubic. Now what am I going to do? Well, let's try. We've done the x-axis values, the x-axis intercept. Let's do the y-axis intercept. Now it's going to hit the y-axis, if you'll look. If a line hits the y-axis, what is the value of x at that point? Well, the value of x at that point is 0. So all we have to do is put in 0 for x to get the y-axis intercepts. OK, so let's do that. And that's not so hard. OK. What's 0 cubed plus 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 4? Minus 4. OK. Now, I still can't see where it changes sign, so at this point, that's a pretty good clues. The, the last things that you do... I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. ...is you put in any strategic points between those points. What would be some strategic points that might help us? Well, let's see. Lightning. Let's put in one, because it's between two of the points, and see where he ends up. I put in one for x. Calculated, I get minus six. Where does he go? Surprise, surprise, surprise. Hmm. OK, let's do another strategic point. Straightening. I put in minus 3, as he's on the left side of my leftmost red point there. And let's see where he brings me, up or down. He gives me a minus 10. So he's way off. Watch him go. See him, see him down there. Now, I've got to find a change of direction. Well, you're going to get good at this. You know it has to change direction. And there's your picture. Okay, that was a pretty good guess on my part, though, I must admit. Do that again. We'll do another one, a little bit easier. Okay. Well, we're going to do the same steps, though. No problemo. Well, the first thing we're going to do is consider that f of x is y. And we're going to try and find, as we did last time, the x-intercept, the x-intercepts, which means where it crosses here. It's going to cross here where y is 0. So let's set y equal to 0 and solve this bad boy. 0 equals negative x to the third. What could I do to both sides? I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. 0 equals minus x. In other words, we get 0. So that's where my x-intercept is. Okay, let's find any y-intercepts. Well, to do the y-intercept, well, to do the x-intercept, we put a 0 in for y. To do the x, to do the y-intercept, we put a 0 in for x. This is even easier. y equals minus 0 to the third. y is 0. I know you are, but what am I? So he's also the x-intercept. He's the y-intercept and the x-intercept. That happens sometimes, so don't cry on me. Well, what, we're going to have to pick some other strategic points, so let's go in another direction. Doesn't matter which ones, it can happen. Don't give up. Nothing's happened to my, my brain, it's all dried up. Nope, just pick any point. Pick an easy point. I'm going to do one. Minus one to the third. Now do your exponents first. So you're going to get one to the third, and the minus of that is minus one. So the point one minus one. That's where that one is. Okay, let's go the other direction. How about minus one? Well, minus one to the third is minus one, but the minus of a minus one is one. So we got the point minus one, one. Now I think you're in pretty good shape because you know this has to go downhill because it's a, a minus cubic and you know that it has to change sign. What have I done to deserve? Well, you could put in minus two and get eight, and if you wanted to do that, and you could put in... You have chosen wisely. You could put in plus two and get minus eight. And I think you'd feel a lot better about this, wouldn't you? You know where the cubic is. I'm dangerous. I'm very, very dangerous. Sketch it, baby. There she blows. Remember that a cubic always changes direction in some fashion. Get the idea? Thank you, sir. One very last cubic. All 
Alrighty then. I'm going to do the same steps. I'm going to find the x-axis intercepts by setting y equal to 0. Now the ones we'll give you up to this point, you're going to be able to solve by factoring. So let's factor this. We'll take an x out and then factor that x squared minus 9 into the difference of two squares. And once again, there'll be three solutions. Hmm. Where is this zero? Well, who's buried in Grant's tomb? At zero is when it's zero. So there's one. Hmm. Where is this zero? Well, this parentheses is zero when x is minus three. So there's another one. How about this one? Hmm. This one is zero when x is positive three. There we go. So we have the x-intercepts. Now, it's not atypical for the y-intercept to be the same. And that's our next step. Find the y-intercept. Remember how we do that? That's the y-intercept is going to occur when x is 0. So we put in a 0. 0 to the third minus 9 times 0. Well, it's going to happen at 0. I know you are, but what am I? So he's also the y-intercept and the x-intercept. OK, so we have to figure this one out now. Let's see. Let's pick, put in a couple more strategic points. Any one between those. Pay attention, son. Look at me when I'm... Let's see. Correct, boy wonder. I'm going to put in one because it's easy and it's between a blue and a red. And if I put it in, I'm going to get y is minus 8. 1 to the third minus 9. And if I graph 1 minus 8... Shazam! OK, another strategic point. Darn tootin'. It's going to be minus 1 because, it's once again, it's going to be between that red and blue points. between the points. If I put it in, I'm trusting you can do that, and even use your calculator. You'll get an 8. Minus 1, 8. Where's that bad boy? Surprise, surprise, surprise. And I'm betting you can pretty much guess where this Jimmy is. But I'll do a couple more. I'll do minus 4. And guess what? I get a minus 28. He's way off. There he goes. And I'll put in something on the other side. At, at, at each of the intervals, 428. That's way off up top. So here he goes. And my picture, if you know what a cubic looks like, it's going to change direction. So let it be written. So let it be done. It's going to look like... Son of a gun. Hey, man, check it out. Now, we're going to do a little bit more about our, our calculator today because we might create problems. For instance, graphing these cubics. We're going to use zoom. Mess with that. We did that last time. And Ooh, yes. we're going to do a little bit with windowing. No problemo. Okay, let's take a look. Now, if I asked you to get your calculator out and graph this bad boy, it's a cubic, 0.5 x to the third plus 12. Now you say, that's no problem, no problem for me. I'm going to hit y equals. I'm going to turn it on first. Hit y equals. I'm going to clear it. And I'm going to type in 0.5x to the third. That's the to the button. Plus 12. And I'm going to hit graph. Now, did you do it? I bet you have a problem. I bet you're not seeing anything. You know why you're not seeing anything? Because it's too high. It's too high. We're in too close. OK, that's what it's going to look like. We're in way too close. So we can change our zoom. Remember from last time? It, it worked, but just we're in too close. Well, why don't you fix it, me, Ed? Well, we can fix it. Let's, let's hit your old buddy zoom. And we've got to pick a zoom, OK? Since we're in too close, we'll zoom out, OK? Which is number three, I believe. And then you'll be able to see it, which you have to hit enter after that. And Goonie Goo Goo, you can see it. Well, let's take a look. I'm going to try this one. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to graph it first. y equals clear out 0.5 x to the third plus 12. And I hit graph, and I'm not seeing it. Well, I'm seeing it, but it sure doesn't look like a cubic, because it should change direction. Well, let's solve this with the zoom. I'll hit zoom, and look at all the different zooms. I can cursor around. I'm going to zoom to zoom out. 
and I'm going to hit enter. I could have just hit three as well. Now I hit, have to hit enter again, and you can see, now you've zoomed way out, that you can see that son of a gun it is now a cubic. It does change direction, which is pretty cool, and clear will get me out of that. So do you remember from last time, now look at, I say look at here. our good zooms, the ones we can use that are going to be useful in the future, aren't just zoom out. We're going to have zoom box. When you zoom a box, it's going to ask you, give me the top left corner and the bottom right hand corner by cursoring around. Okay, so if you have a specific place you want to zoom on a graph, zoom box is going to be quite useful. Zoom in is to move closer. I don't, very, I don't do that very often. More often than not, I'm zooming out. Okay, and if you want to get back to your regular, regular schmegular, that's number six, that's zoom standard. We'll do that in just a second. Okay, that gets us right back to the default zoom. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our next attraction... Well, consider this. Let's look at... You think you know it all now because you can zoom in and out. Let's look at this quadratic... How do I know it's a quadratic function? It's an x squared. Y equals x squared plus 25. Okay, and if I wanted to graph it on the calculator, I'd hit on, of course. I'd say y equals... And then I'd clear out my old... The thing I did last time, the cubic. And I'd have to graph x squared plus 25, or I'd type that in. Now, if I hit graph, you know what you're going to see this time? You're going to see absolutely nothing. You didn't do it wrong. You're going to see absolutely nothing. That's what it's going to look like. Uh -oh. You know what's... The problem is, the graph is on there. It's just too high. Now, you could say we could zoom out, but I've got a better solution, because if you zoom out so far, Things are going to get so teeny, they're going to be hard to see. What happened? Well, the problem here is that we're too low. We're looking too low on the graph. So... Now I use my secret weapon! We're going to use the window ability of a calculator. Where, know, know where the window button is, okay? And you're going to hit window, and you're going to pick... I'm going to have you go down, down, down. I'll do it with you using your cursor. And you're going to pick, you're going to say the minimum I want to be is 20. Now, as it is right now, the minimum is minus 10. That's the lowest uh, Y value. And you're going to say, you're going to go down, and you're going to say the Y max is 50. So instead of going from negative 10 to positive 10, which is the normal, it's going to go from 20 to 50. And then you're going to graph, and you're going to be quite happy. You're going to be able to see it. Now, it's going to look a little bit weird, and I want you to understand why. So let's do it. Now, if we look at the graph of the last cubic, here it is. I'm zoomed out. So you know what? I'm going to get you back to the normal place. I'm going to hit zoom, and I'm going to hit zoom standard. I could hit six, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Okay, and remember that we, had a tr we were in too close on that. Okay, now we're going to do this other one. Y equals, let's clear out the cubic. And let's put in the quadratic, the x squared. x to the tooth plus 25. And if I hit graph, there it is. You don't see anything, because as I hope you understand, you're too low. And I could zoom out, but I'd be standing back about seven blocks from what I, you know, I'd have to zoom way out, because it's 25 up there. Instead, I'm going to change my window. I'm going to hit window, and I'm going to change various numbers. I'm going to change my, go down to my, my y minimum, my minimum value for y, and I'm going to change that to 20. Okay? And then I'm going to go down to the y max and change that to 50. So this picture isn't going to go from negative 10 to 10 this time. It's going to go from, oops, it's going to go from 20 to 50 as far as top to bottom. Now let's graph. You can see it real nice. Note the bottom line is a dotted line because it's not really an axis. That's the line 20, okay? If it's an axis, it would be a solid line, but that's why it's dotted, okay? Get the idea? And you're pretty happy with, that's about as good as you can window that thing. Well, let's clear out, and we're back in the ball game. So, window is a very nice feature very useful. Now, 
Let's review what possible uh, window settings you can change. The X minimum is going to be the left edge where you want of your coordinate plane of, of, your, of your window. The X max is going to be the right edge. Uh, the X scale, that's SCL, is going to be the unit scale. You don't have to make this square. You can stretch out the X's with the Y's. The Y minimum is the lower edge. The Y max is the top edge. And of course we have a Y scale. So you can, usually you want them to be the same. I like them to be the same, but it doesn't have to be. Okay? Well, I think that's enough for today. So, you have to remember to come back next time, number one. Make sure you come back. Make sure you watch every show. And don't study your homework. Remember what we do. We do it. And if you have any questions, Remember that you can go to the web page at www.montgomerycollege.edu up slash algebra 2, the number 2. Okay, so till next time, and I better see you next time. Do your homework, and thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. them a real-world television experience.